Hey guys, Ryan here with BoxGuard Security. In this video series, we're going to take a look at our Honeywell Vista 20P programming section by section. Let's take a look. Okay, so now that we have the basic zones 1 through 8, 95, 96, 99 uh, programmed, and we went over how to program a wireless contact. Right now what we're going to do is go through the basic programming of the Vista 20P, which is star 20 through star 54. And that is just some basics of programming um, that every installation will have to do. And what we're going to do is go right down the line. So pause this video at each step. Take your time, make sure and make notes, and if you have your own uh, PDF printed or your own uh, install guide to follow along, that'll definitely make it a lot easier. So the first thing, which is already up, is star 20. And this is the installer code. This is the four digit code that you need to enter programming. The default code is 4112. 800. Strongly suggest changing that 4112 to a code that is um, specific to you, but is not going to be the same code as what you use to arm and disarm the system. So let's just say that you use the last four of your cell phone number, and that is 7533. What you're going to do is do star 20, 7533. Three. And now you want to make sure and write that down so that you don't forget it. Um, keep that in a safe place. Typically, as we do these first um, 54 fields or up through star 54, that three ding confirmation will mean that you're moving to the next field. So the next one is quick arm enable. Residential applications. It's a great idea to keep it as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is hit 1 to enable that and then 0 for partition number 2. So what that means is that you can do pound away to arm your system instead of 1, 2, 3, 4 away. It's a great feature. If you don't want that for a commercial application, you would select 0 instead. RF jam. We're going to keep this simple. Zero. Uh, RF jam is RF interference from uh, intentional or non-intentional RF devices. Uh, in my experience, it's much better to keep that off unless we are talking about a super high security installation, which is a completely different topic. <clears throat> Forced bypass. Um, this is something that you want to enable, so we're going to do one, zero. And the different things here that you see, one, two, and three, or some of them have one and two, that's the partition. So right now we're only programming partition number one, that's why the second one is going to be zero. Forced bypass means that if you have a faulty window in your living room, you can bypass that living room window and arm the rest of your system. So star 23, forced bypass 1-0. The next is going to be the RF house ID, which unless you're getting into home automation, is going to be 00, zero for partition 1, 00, zero for partition 2, Zero, 0 for common partitions, so six zeros. Chime by zone. Keep it simple. Zero, 0, That means that every zone that is perimeter will chime. Interior zones will not. You can complicate it and assign it only to certain zones if you want. However, I don't recommend that. X10 house code. Zero. Not needed. Access codes, star 28, we're going to do 00, zero 
because you're not going to be accessing your Vista 20 through a phone line. Then we jump down to 31, single alarm per zone. We're going to do zero. That's a standard uh, programming procedure for that one. Fire alarm sounder timeout, which is star 32. We're going to do zero. That means that if we program the siren to sound for eight minutes, that the fire alarm, if there is one, will also sound for that same amount of time. And right here, bell timeout. This is a little trickier. Um, whatever number you put in here is going to be multiplied by four. So if we put in a one, that would be four minutes. Two is eight, and so on and so forth. So a very standard two, eight minutes is a long time for that siren to go off. You can change that if you wish. We're going to go with standards here. You can surely modify and test if you wish uh, for your application. This is just one way to do it. Exit delay, 34, a very standard 60 second delay, nothing for partition two. That means when you arm it, you have 60 seconds to exit the building out of one of your entry exit doors. Entry delay, a very standard 30 seconds, nothing for partition two. Entry exit delay two. Why complicate it? So what I did just there was anytime that you want to skip a field of programming, you're going to do star that field and then star again, and it will either delete the data or skip past it. So we were at star 35, and if we want to read our what we put in, we'll do pound 35, and it's going to read us 30, and then 0, 0 for the second partition. And then if we do star 36, we don't want a second entry delay for most installations. We want to keep it simple. Uh, you don't want to have 30 seconds on one door and 15 seconds on another because a year from now, you probably won't remember. So we're going to skip past that by going star 36, star. Now, we need to tell it where we were. So we're going to go to star 37. Exit warning. Uh, typically, we program 0, 0. And the reason for that is if you have pets or if you're one of those people that likes it quiet, not a lot of bells and dings and whistles, um, if you program the exit warning, your system will beep for that entire 60 seconds. Some people, it's no big deal. A lot of customers, in my experience, don't like that, so we disable that feature. Confirmation of arming ding, zero, zero. If you have key fobs programmed, you can program two, zero for that star 38 field, um, but it is not necessary. Uh, it's going to give a chirp over the siren when you arm it through the key fob. Star 39, very important. You want to always select number one for this. And that way, if your system is armed and you lose power, and the power turns back on, your system comes back to life in an armed state. Not only is that a security feature, um, it's also good in a, in a break in attempt where they try to bypass the system by killing power hoping that it's just disarmed the system. Star 40 is the PABX access. So we're going to skip past that. And we're going to go right to star 41. Now, this likely will not be used for your system uh, because this is only used if you have a telephone line connected to your system. Star 41 is if you are connected to a central station for monitoring only through a phone line. If you are monitored, chances are 
uh, there's a very high chance these days that you have a cellular or IP connection, in which case for star 41 you would not put anything. Star 41, star. And star 42 is the secondary phone number, uh, which we're not going to need either. So we're going to go hang on. Star 42 is the secondary phone number that we're going to do star 42 star. Star 43 is the primary four digit account number uh, that's going to be used with your system. If your system is being reported, or if your system is reporting to a central station, then you will need to put in a four digit account number there. Let's just say that it's one, two, three, four, star to enter, and that'll jump you to your next field. <clears throat> if your system is going to be local only, then you don't need to input a number there for the star 43. Star 44 is the same thing for the second partition. Star 44 star. And we're also going to do the same thing for 45 and 46. Um, to jump past them. Star 47. If your system is connected to a telephone line, you can put in a 1 for a tone dial not pulse. Um, you don't need to put in anything there if it is just a local only system or if it is monitored. So star 48, 99% of all the systems are going to go 7-7 seven, seven, and that is contact ID. Uh, contact ID is the way that it is reported to the central station. Star 49 is going to be 0 we're going to report everything to the same central station. You can complicate it. Uh, I don't know of any necessary scenarios where you would need to report different things to different central stations, so we're just going to do zero there. That's just flexibility that Honeywell gives you. Uh, star 50, burglary dial delay. Most systems are going to be a zero. Uh, however, if you are in a jurisdiction that requires requires a delay on burglary signals, um, which is something that you can look up, then there is something called a SIA limit. Um, SIA is an organization uh, that works with local jurisdictions, uh, law enforcement, code enforcement, and mandates certain things. Uh, in our area here, we don't have them, so that's not something that we get involved with. Um, but that's something that you can look at, look into for your area uh, if you're going to be monitored. And so star 53 is going to be a zero. Star 54 is going to be a two. And then we jump to star 55. Um, this is going to depend on how your system is laid out. If you have a cellular communicator, you're going to input a 1. If you have a telephone connection, you're going to input a 0. Um, so for this, let's just say that you have a cellular communicator. We're going to input a 1 there. And then that we are going to pick up the next video on star 59. Uh, that's where we'll continue. That gets into a lot of different trouble reports and how to report low batteries, um, stuff like that. That'll take us right through um, star 95 on the next one.